We got a bunch of new Caleb and Sophia videos to catch up on. It's been a long time since I did one of these because I covered all of them, but lo and behold, they released more. So let's take a look at Jehovah's Witnesses latest propaganda intended to indoctrinate children. Caleb and Sophia. Let's get into it. Before we get into it, I just want to mention a couple things. First, I want to shout out my merch store. I have a new addition to my store. It's a no trespassing sign that says, Danger, apostates, disfellowshipped, and or suppressive persons past this point. The sign's mostly intended for people who are sick of being bothered by Jehovah's Witnesses or Mormons and just want to be left alone. I've had people tell me they had pagan pictures or even pictures of Richard Spencer or Confederate flags or whatever in their windows. And Jehovah's Witnesses still knocked on their door. When I was a Jehovah's Witness, I believed that nobody was being beyond redemption. No matter what their ideology or belief system, we should still try to save them. They aren't afraid of shit, except one thing, apostates. They are scared shitless by apostates. They're mentally diseased. They're agents of Satan. They aren't afraid of literal but they are afraid of apostates. And you don't have to be an ex Jehovah's Witness to be an apostate either. Just being critical of the religion will do the trick. So the sign is 100% truthful for anybody who wants it. Want to keep Jehovah's Witnesses away? Get the sign and post it right outside your door. I can just about guarantee they won't come knocking again. If you want one of the signs, then click the link in the description in the pinned comment, and it'll take you to my Etsy store where you can get one. You can also reach it by going to telltaleatheist.com slash 3D store. I have some other stuff for sale there too, like mugs, and stickers and stuff, so give it a look. Okay, with all that being said, let's take a look at the newest Caleb and Sophia video. Caleb, why aren't you playing outside? Dad said I'm punished. Oh, I see. You know Dad loves you, even when he disciplines you. One thing I've noticed about Jehovah's Witnesses is their love for punishment, for punishment's sake. Take this fellowshipping, for example. Jehovah's Witnesses builds their society in such a way that the members are basically completely isolated from the outside world, without actually being physically separated from it. So when I was growing up, I was expected to make friends only within the religion. I could live in the world, but not be a part of it. That's their big catchphrase. When I was a kid, I had a neighbor that lived about five houses down from me, and after school, I'd ride my bike to his house. He'd record Pokemon on his VCR because it came on like an hour before we got home from school. If you guys don't know what a VCR is, it's like primitive DVR. And if you don't know what DVR is, it's like primitive Netflix. Anyways, I was riding my bike to his house every day after school in like sixth grade. And one day, my parents followed me. They saw my bike in his yard, brought me home, and took my bike away. Just because I knew him in school didn't mean I was allowed to be friends with him. The whole goal is to keep you isolated so you'll build your social network within the religion. If you're making friends with an outsider, your goal had better be to bring them into the religion. So what's all this got to do with punishment? Well, that's what Jehovah's Witnesses call disfellowshipping. They call it punishment. When you break a rule, no matter how trivial or mundane, they will kick you out of the religion and your entire social network, every friend and family member you've ever had, are barred from talking to you. They risk being disfellowshipped themselves if they talk to you anyways. So what's the point? Why do that? They say it's punishment for violating the rules. And there is a long list of rules. In including but not limited to apostasy, which is rebellion against Jehovah's organization, or promoting sects, that's S-E-C-T-S, -E blood transfusions, drunkenness, employment violating Christian principles, like working for any religious or government establishment, even as a contractor, like the Salvation Army, Boeing, or Lockheed Martin, selling tobacco products, like at a gas station, attending another church, following morning customs that involve false worship, i.e. going to a funeral that isn't performed by Jehovah's Witnesses, homosexual and idolatry, like wearing a cross around your neck. This is by no means an exhaustive list, but I do just want to point out how they'll disfellowship you for wearing a cross around your neck because they identify it as idolatry, but have absolutely no problem wearing earrings, tie clips, buttons, bumper stickers, hats, and a plethora of other stuff with the Jehovah's Witness logo on it. So take that for what you will. Also on the list, talking to a disfellowshipped person. That'll get you disfellowshipped too. But what's it actually accomplish anyways? Does it bring people back to the religion. 
is it productive in controlling people? It actually results in people desperately hiding things from others, which drives a wedge between them and their friends and family even deeper. And if they do manage to get this fellowship, since everybody they ever cared about is barred from talking to them, it makes it even less likely that they're going to rejoin because the process of getting reinstated is long and arduous. It isn't easy. It takes between six months and two years to get reinstated, usually closer to the six to 12 month range. During that time, this fellowship people really have no other choice but to build up a brand new network of friends outside the religion for the first time in their lives. And that shows them that outsiders aren't as evil as they've been told their entire lives. Instead of embracing sinners and helping them find their way back, Jehovah's Witnesses punish them for punishment's sake, which destroys people's lives and honestly makes it even less likely they'll return. This whole punishment for punishment's sake thing is archaic and unproductive. Anybody who has a kid will probably realize that what I'm saying about this is accurate. You want your kid to do their homework, taking their phone away for long periods of time might make intuitive sense, but it isn't going to get their homework done. Positive reinforcement is a hundred times more productive than negative reinforcement. Taking something away accomplishes almost nothing. Positive reinforcement for good behavior is how you get things done. Let's continue. Um, hey, do you remember when we planted the fruit tree? Uh-huh. It grew fast. But then... It fell over. What did Dad do? He helped it. Right. Did the straps hurt the tree? No, they helped it grow straight. Yes. Jehovah and Dad correct you sometimes too, like the tree. Do you remember what the Bible says? Jehovah disciplines... Uh... Jehovah disciplines the ones he loves. Again, this is perfectly analogous to their disfellowshipping arrangement. In fact, they even use that quote when they disfellowship people. Jehovah disciplines the one he loves. In reality, if Jehovah really was an all-knowing God, his parenting techniques would have been based on the most productive strategies possible, instead of basing them on what ancient tribes of people from the Bronze Age believed to be the best way, which just so happens to be the worst way. Honestly, I feel the same about the legal system. We shouldn't be punishing people for breaking the law. We should be focused on recidivism. If our criminal justice system was focused on trying to solve the underlying problems that caused somebody to break the law in the first place, like getting a drug addict treatment instead of throwing them in prison for 10 years, the U.S. wouldn't have the highest incarceration rate in the world, at 716 per 100,000 of the national population. What disgusts me the most about this Caleb and Sophia video is the fact that they treat their members like children who need to be taught a lesson, and they'll stop at nothing to teach it to them, including but not limited to taking their mother away from them permanently. Let's continue. Oh, oh Caleb. I love you, Dad. If discipline is love, you must love me a whole lot. <laughs> yes, Caleb. Yes, I do. There's subtext to everything Jehovah's Witnesses put out, because they want basically every member to be able to apply it to their own lives in some way. It's genuinely depressing to watch Jehovah's Witnesses justify the fucked up decisions they make regarding their membership, and I hope the critiques I put out are waking people up to why what they're doing is not only wrong, but completely unproductive. They're getting a lot of public coverage right now. There have been exposés on them on the Oxygen Network, A&E, and every newspaper from here to the UK. Generally, the religion does the old if I didn't see it, it didn't happen technique. So they completely ignore the criticisms, if at all possible, as a corporation. But as I talked about recently on the podcast, they have been filing copyright claims to get people's real names so they can disfellowship them. I did a video on this on my podcast recently, and I'll be releasing another on my main channel pretty soon, so keep a lookout for it, because it's getting pretty serious. Anyways, that's all I've got for you. Don't forget to check out my Etsy store. Link is in the description in the pinned comment. Okay, thanks for watching, guys.